Hey everybody, um, thought I would start a YouTube channel. Um, I saw some people doing like good Q and A's on Facebook and then, uh, and then they get kind of buried. And I've also heard that about the videos I was doing during prep on, uh, on the elliptical, uh, my noisy elliptical that you all loved. Um, so I thought, you know, I would take questions from time to time and then I uh, just throw them up on, on a YouTube channel and, um, then I'll, I'll share them on Facebook and, if I keep getting questions, I'll keep keep answering them. Um, I already got a few good ones. Um, I'll try to hit a few here. Um, but what I want to cover on this channel is uh, just things that I know something about. So obviously, uh, physique enhancement, um, over the counter supplementation, uh, anything to do with with bodybuilding. Um, I'll cover some law. Um, you know, I, I can't obviously advise you, but I'll give general. Um, guidance um and then really just anything business if you have a question on um how i became a coach or you know uh just my take on getting businesses started in general um not only have i had a prep business for 10 years i also um work for an entrepreneur who has about 30 businesses and i'm basically on call for him um i do go into an office um uh, but uh, really, it's it's more like have being a retained uh, attorney just for him. So um, I have that background as well. So uh, let's see. Let's get into it. Uh, what were some questions um, that were asked? Um, so one question uh, that was brought up was how I use keto uh, to kick off a diet sometimes. Um, and the reason I do that is... Um, I know some of my clients have really highly adapted metabolisms, uh, meaning that um, most of the time when you make a change, they adjust very well. So you'll see these people being able to eat absurd amounts of carbs and calories in the off season, and they still really don't get that that heavy. Um, and when I say heavy, I mean fat. Um, so you might have a male at four thousand calories, but then you know. The first time you diet him as a coach, you got him down to seventeen hundred to get in shape, and you're and you're realizing that you know for one the four thousand probably wasn't necessary, and for two um, they're just very highly adaptive. Every change you make, you might get a little little move, and then you have to change it. Um, you have some clients who, if you started three hundred carbs in the off season, you drop fifty. They drop you know two to three weeks. You drop fifty. They drop two to three weeks. You had fifteen minutes of list cardio. Every morning they drop. Not everyone's like that. Um, and usually it takes me a prep to kind of figure some of these out. So some of the ones that are more highly adaptive, if I've got, you know, I always try to get carbs up in the off season. But when you do that, you know, you're going to gain some body fat and you are going to lose some insulin sensitivity. So with those people, a lot of times what I do is I shock them right away. So, you know, let's say someone's on 200 carbs. Well, I'm going to go right into a ketogenic diet. Um, and my my thought on this has changed over the years. I can admit that. Um, at first, uh, for a while, I did the bodybuilding type keto, where for a male it would be like you know maybe two fifty to two hundred and eighty uh, protein and maybe eighty to ninety fats. Um, that would be maybe say for a middleweight type guy um, like myself. Um, but over the years, after I played with it and just really got into the ketogenic science. I realized that although that does work um, for many people, there's a better way. And now what I generally do is, is about 70% of fat intake and 30% protein intake. Um, but it really ends up being about 25% protein intake because I'll leave about 5% for trace of carbs. Um, so that might be how I'll start off a diet. So it's a really high fat. Uh, low to moderate protein and extremely low carbohydrate. And what I'm doing here is not only am I shocking the heck out of the body, um, less calories, of course, and um, switching fuel sources on it, um, I'm also resetting insulin sensitivity. Um, after pounding the body in the off season with all the calories, it's going to be down. Uh, your insulin sensitivity is going to be down. So we're looking to restore that. We're going to burn off some body fat very quickly. Um, so then it comes down to how long do you do this? Um, for my prep, I only did it four weeks out of the 11. And when I switched over, I, I feel like I lost about 4 to 5% body fat in 14 days. I mean, it was, 
it was ridiculous how quickly my body then just soaked up the carbs and just really got tighter. Um, for some people, I might only do it two weeks just to reset on some instant insulin sensitivity and I might get right back to a carb cycle. Um, but Hey, you know, if you're doing it and it's working well, ride it out. Um, there's so many moves you can go from when you're on a high fat, lower protein intake that you could literally fat cycle. You could start dropping fats and work towards a bodybuilding keto. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. So you could ride it out until it stops working. Sometimes I ride it out till we're about four weeks out and I've made enough moves where I've Fat cycle, throwing in protein veggie days, and then I throw the carbs in towards the end, and they fill out into the show and get tight. So you kind of just, you know, go with the flow and see where you're at on that. But um, generally, I do this with more highly adaptive uh, metabolisms. Uh, I like that shock right away, and I and I like the um, the high refeeds that come along with the ketogenic diet. I know for myself. I have a pretty highly adaptive metabolism and in, in, in those shocking, you know, 700 carb refeeds that I can intake uh, and not really gain a ton of weight um, and be back to a baseline by Wednesday and hitting new lows by Thursday and Friday. It just, my body really likes the dichotomy of the highs and lows. So that's one thing that I do that maybe not a lot of coaches do, but again, it's not with everyone. And um, generally, if it's the first time I'm dieting them, I, I generally don't do that either unless they are able to tell me that that's their type of metabolism. Otherwise, a lot of times I end up learning it um, after the first prep. And, you know, you're about eight weeks in and you see how hard and how much of tooth pulling it is to drop anything, even as you keep pulling carbs down. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and then I thought I would field the question about what kind of law I do. Uh, someone asked that. Um, so I always knew I didn't want to work for a law firm. Uh, I would not be good at the law firm politics. I would not love 60 to 70 hours a week. So I always knew that that was just not my, not my bag. Um, I also knew I didn't want to litigate. Uh, I, I worked, I clerked at a litigation firm and to me, it just seemed pointless. I mean, the, some of the things people argue over and spend you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars on attorneys each. It's just crazy. Um, it just, it just always seemed foolish to me the whole process. So I was never really interested in that. After I saw that side of it, I knew early that I wanted to do corporate law or nothing at all. And the thing is, sometimes it's tough to get an in-house corporate job without first uh, putting your time in at a law firm. So. What I chose to do is when I got out of law school, I actually took a non-traditional legal job. I worked with the government, um, uh, the Department of Labor, and what I did was I traveled around to um, different unions, and I would audit their books and try to find uh, cases of impropriety where the union reps would uh, steal money. Um, and a lot of times, you know, the members had a sense and so they were calling our office and then I would be sent out. Um, it was interesting for a while and, you know, I would many a times every week be in some little podunk town in Ohio or Kentucky or Indiana, got kind of old and, um, there was just some differences with my boss and I, I don't like to be micromanaged and, um, at the same time, I did hang a shingle out and I had my own little solo practice and I was helping small businesses set up LLCs and uh, helping people with uh, dissolution of marriage without kids, just simple things that I could do. I uh, wrote briefs um, for uh, cases um, that were uh, in appeal and things like that. And that way, that kind of kept my license and my mind active. Um, so it's always kind of been my thing to always have a few streams of income. Even during that time, I was also refing soccer. I was bouncing at a bar. I've just always believed having different streams of income. So I finally saw the post and I found someone, an entrepreneur. He was looking for an in-house counsel. He was willing to take a chance on a new guy and, um, him and I had hit it off really well. And, um, I started there about 13 years ago and I've never changed and I handle everything from trademark filing to when he buys a new building, all the bank documents and the purchase agreements. I handle a lot of leases. He has he has buildings. He also has um, uh, residential. Um, I would handle if people aren't paying their bills, sending out collection letters. I'm pretty much do anything that comes along in business that you would need. 
Um, I negotiate when his partners want to buy out, you know, they want to get out of a business and, you know, I, I do, I handle those negotiations and then all those documents. Um, I set up all his new businesses, all his LLCs. So there's just a lot that goes into, you know, having 30 businesses and I'm basically on call to handle all those. And, um, that's what I wanted to do and I like it. Um, and, um, so the basically being on call like that allows me to also still be able to handle my prep clients as well. So that's the kind of law I do. And I touched on one other question. And uh, yeah, so we're going to just cover broad uh, subjects. Uh, like I said, bodybuilding, business, law, whatever people might want to hear about um, from Scooby Prep. I will try to touch on it from time to time and load the videos on up. So thanks for listening. And maybe some of these will get you guys through cardio. <laughs> All right. See you later.